Blake, so happy to welcome this guy back to the program. We were joined by Swedish hockey broadcaster, former Edmonton Oiler, and the pride of Trail British Columbia, Mr. Mike Zanier from Sweden. How are you doing, Mike? Long time no talk. I'm doing good, guys. Great to see you again. Great, uh, great to be seen and glad you can make some time because, as per usual, the Vancouver Canucks have a lot of interests in Sweden, including with players whose games you call. We were uh, sitting here in our studio a few weeks back. You were doing a game back in Sweden, and we got a direct message from you about Philip Johansson, the Vancouver Canucks signee. What was it you told us again? Well, they, uh, Vecra, they actually won the SHL title last night. They played Frölund in the second round. So I had a little bit extra eyes on Philip Johansson. I wanted to see how much different he was this year than last year. After watching for about a period and a half, I just went, wow, this guy, is, he's ready to take the next step. He, uh, he just looks very poised out there. He looks like he knows, you know, he's, he's not under pressure. He just, he's a good skater, good shooter, plays a very sound game. He's not offensive. He's not, he's not a real, just a defensive. He was all around, good first pass, good skater. He just looked very comfortable in the SHL. And just seeing that, that's why I, I said to you guys, hey, because you guys have been talking about him, and I said, yeah, this guy's going to play. He's going to play in the NHL, you told us. Uh, Mike, the one big difference playing in the Swedish League versus playing in the National Hockey League is the forecheck, right? We see yeah. this a lot with young Swedish defensemen. How do you adapt to what is typically a hellacious and physical forecheck? How do you think Johansson will, uh, will fare? Well, he's a good skater. He processes the game very quickly. So it's just those short outlook passes that he's got to get comfortable doing. And, and usually for all the Europeans coming over, it just takes a little time. You know, usually over here you have an extra second. And when they get over to North America, they just realize they got to make that decision a little bit quicker. I don't see him having a problem with it. He might start in the A, give him a little time to get used to the smaller ice surface. But I, I see him playing in Vancouver. Not a strapping guy. He's not a behemoth, but he's also not small either, is he? No, he, he looks he looks decent size. I think he's about yeah. six one, maybe six two. Yes, and yeah, and as you get older, you add a few more pounds, yeah, right? So. Exactly. He 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 looks very comfortable. He's one of the better defensemen that I saw in, in the playoffs this year. Twenty three years of age, so already some maturity there. And uh, it, judging by the way the Canucks snapped him up and moved him over to North America right away, and we'll see what the HL playoffs uh, bring there, but. They clearly saw what you saw. Like, that that jives, doesn't it? The fact that they were they acted so quickly on him. Yeah, and then I was uh, I was fortunate. I ran into one of the reporters that follows Frulan, and I said, "Has he been good, this good all year?" He said, "No, actually, mm -hmm. he's he's improved in the playoffs. The last little bit of the season and the playoffs, he took another step forward. Um, so that's a good sign as well." And, uh, of course, uh, who knows? Depending on how far the Abbotsford Canucks go here, uh, we may see him. Uh, on this side of the ocean, Mike, Jonathan, Lakara Mackey, you've been following him a little bit as well. Speaking the of getting first... better in the playoffs. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like night and day when you just look at the the stat line. Tell us about Lakara Mackey and his playoffs in the Al Svenskin. Yeah, he struggled at the beginning, as, as everybody noted over, over in Vancouver. And uh, I don't know what it was. I think it was a little bit of um, of confidence than the coach. The coach that they had, there was so much pressure for their team to go up. So the younger line wasn't getting a lot of ice time. They changed the coach in the middle of the season when he was hurt. He came back. He took him a while to get going. But you see in the playoffs, every series he's getting better. And he's getting more. Uh, he's he's on their first power play right now. He's like one of the key guys. And uh, he, he looks very comfortable. And uh, from what I was talking to a couple of people last night at the game, and they're expecting him probably maybe to stay over here next year. But only if he plays mm -hmm. in the SHL. He won't play in the All Suns next year. He people love his shot, but he had a four assist night on the weekend. I mean, is he does he look like an all around player more than a shooter? Yeah, I think he he's got. Uh, I think it was half of his points in the playoffs have been on the power play, which is mm -hmm. important. And he he's he's comfortable with the puck. He shoots it. Uh, he's a good passer. He sees the ice well. You, you see him. As an 18 year old maturing, you see, you know, when they, when they're that young, sometimes they're overwhelmed and, they're, and they can't slow the game down in their eyes or in their mind. And when they can start to slow it down, that's when everything sort of just falls into place. I remember talking to you guys when Elias Pedersen was here. And I think I said to you guys one time, okay, now I can see him. 
he's just slowed everything down in his head. And, and then from that time off, he took, he took right off. And mm-hmm. it's kind of that situation when players can just get that game slow in their head where they can react. And it's not, not just sort of a blur They're, That's when they start to take off. I mean, it's, it's probably individual, but do you, do you have a preference like for a player like a, like Haramaki that you've seen develop already at the El Spanskin level? Is the SHL the best place to be for him? Is the AHL the best place to be for him? Uh, does it does it really depend on the player? I think it depends on the player, and I think it depends on the situation as well. There's teams over yeah. here that will let him play. Most teams are very defensive minded. They have all their players that play in their system and their structure. Doesn't always allow their offensive game to grow. Right. And if he's not in a in a top six role, he will be, you know he'll be just checking basically. That's why you see a lot of guys who play in the SHL but have no numbers. They never get the opportunity. So it, yep. I think it depends on on the best situation for him. If it's in – can he play junior next year too? He could. Yeah. Uh, they, that would be – yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they, they have three options, Vancouver, if they can get him in junior or in the A or leave him over here. Yeah, I mean, he won't be 19 until late July, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, absolutely, he can play junior. You mentioned he won't play in the Alsvenskan only if they move up. How is your gardens doing there, Mike? Uh, when will we know they had a, one way or the other? They had a really good chance. They had two home games and lost them both. So, now they're under three games to one going back to Moto. And uh, the last game I was watching, Moto looks like the better team. Mm-hmm. Your garden had their... Um, I think it was. I think his name is Carl Limboom. That was an, was a junior goalie for Sweden. And he had an outstanding year, but I think he got a, a, a concussion just be in the second round, and he's been and they really missed their top goalie. So, so I don't expect Dear Gordon to go up this year. Wow. Uh, well, speaking of uh, World Juniors, uh, Lucas Forsell, he was the seventh round pick, two hundred and first overall in the twenty. 20- 21 draft but he made the swedish world junior team he's played shl games in fact scored 11 goals in the shl in 35 games this year and dipped a toe in the alsvenskan in the junior ranks as well but for a seventh round pick mike boy Forsell looks like he might be a prospect to keep an eye on yeah him. yeah he's not a big guy but he's got a good shot he has a, a nose for the nets uh it's it'll be good to see how how his skating develops so he'll get into those dirty areas to score goals but as a very promising year he's had so far, or it's over now, but promising year, and he actually played very well for Firestad in the playoffs as well. Yeah, four points, two goals, two assists in the seven games that they uh, that they played. So, I mean, when you when you find those jewels deep in the in the draft, and you see development out of them, uh, I mean that that's that's found wallet sort of stuff, isn't it? Exactly. But I will warn you, I saw I Detroit had a kid over here that can't remember his name right now. He was a maybe a third or fourth round draft choice. Led the the SHL in scoring one year in the playoffs, and then just fizzled out. And I don't you don't even see him anymore. So right. that those that happens as well. So it's not linear necessarily. No, no exactly. Well, yeah. uh, lastly, Mike uh, Arvid Kosmar is a Swedish centerman that the Canucks took in the 2019 draft. They got to sign him by June first or they lose rights to him. He's played at Linchapins. What do you think? Uh, is he uh, worth signing? Is he worth developing over here? How many contracts they have left? Yeah, not many. Uh, they got a few, not a ton. Well, but you know what? A few. He hasn't really uh, taken the, the step that I expected him from when he got drafted a couple years ago. Uh, I remember mm-hmm. him in the World Juniors and, and playing a big role and then and actually playing uh, a, a big role for Lynn shipping, but he seems like he's flattened out the last few years. Uh, maybe Vancouver sees something. I haven't seen a lot of him, but the games I have seen, he hasn't really, he hasn't really done much to, to catch my eye. I'll say that. But yeah. You bring yeah. up a good point on the contracts though. They went gangbusters with the collegiate ranks this year, as we saw. And you, you wonder if that's because guys like a Cosmar just are not part of their plans going forward. Yeah, they got yeah. three left to answer yeah. your question, Mike. Okay. So yeah. we're down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, my friend, great hearing your voice again. Great seeing you yeah. on the video side. Yeah, same. Thank you for the update. Look forward to your next visit back home here. Yeah. Yes. To British Columbia. Sure visit. Don't know when. Come it's, see us. Yeah, I will. Don't know when it's going to be. I don't think it'll be this summer. I'm heading to Rome in September for the Ryder Cup. So that's my holiday this summer. Oh, oh wow. Enjoy that. Go, We're all very jealous. Go Europe, go. <laughs> <laughs>